Today we're going to look at a nice functional differential equation. So in particular, we're going to find all real valued functions satisfying f of x plus y equals f of x plus f of y minus f prime of x times f prime of y. And we're going to take care of one case very, very quickly. And let's note the following. And that is if f prime of x equals zero for all x, well, in other words, if the derivative is always zero, well, it's well known that that means that f of x equals a constant for all x. But if f of x equals a constant and f of zero equals zero, that means that f of x must be equal to zero. Okay, well, like I said, that case is really simple and also not super interesting. So let's maybe look at the case where f prime of x is not always zero. But let's observe that if f prime of x is not always zero, we can find a place where it's non-zero. So let's do that. So let's take some number that I'll call t so that we have f prime of t is not equal to zero. And we're fixing that value of t. And now what I'll do is I'll set y equal to t in our original functional differential equation. And let's observe that I can solve for f prime of x in terms of everything else. And I think I can just write this down. Notice that f prime of x, well, let's see, it's gonna be f of x minus f of x plus t minus f of t all over f prime of t. So again, that's just taking this special value of t where the derivative is non-zero, setting it equal to y and solving for f prime of x. And this is gonna hold for all real numbers x. But observe, that means that we can write the derivative in terms of, well, the original function and a bunch of constants. Observe that f of t is a constant and f prime of t is also a constant. So in particular, we can use this equation to find higher derivatives of f. Let's observe that we have f double prime of x is equal to f prime of x minus f prime of x plus t over f prime of t. Notice I don't need to do anything with the f of t. If I take the derivative of that, that's zero. And then while this is in the denominator, it's a constant. So I don't have to use anything silly like the quotient rule. And well, so on and so forth. We have, for example, f triple prime of x is equal to f double prime of x minus f double prime of x plus t over f prime of t and so on and so forth. The important thing here is that all of the derivatives exist. And if all of the derivatives exist, this is a so-called smooth function. So I'd like to use one of these to gain a little bit of more information. So let's take this one right here, this f double prime of x, and let's perhaps set x equal to zero and see what happens. So if we set x equal to zero, we're gonna get f double prime of zero equals f prime of zero minus f prime of t all over f prime of t. So in other words, we're gonna have f prime of zero over f prime of t minus one. So f double prime of zero, well, it looks like it really dep depends on f prime of zero, but Let's observe up here, I can set x equals y equals zero, and I can pretty quickly see that f prime of zero equals zero. Well, let's do that really quick. So like I said, if I take our original functional differential equation and I set x equals y equals zero, that gives me this nice equation of f of zero equals two times f of zero minus f prime of zero squared. But of course, we know that f of zero is zero from our initial condition, but that means that f prime of zero squared is zero. In other words, f prime is zero. Well, f prime is zero at zero. And observe that doesn't contradict what we're having up here. This is just supposing that f prime is not always zero. It's forced to be zero at zero as we've seen. 
But now we can put these two things together and we immediately get an equation for f double prime of zero. Notice that we get f double prime of zero is equal to negative one. Okay, so let's see where we can go from here. So far we've determined that f prime of zero is zero and f double prime of zero is negative one. That's of course assuming that f prime is not identically equal to zero. In that case, we covered over here. But now let's take our original functional differential equation and apply a certain partial derivative to it. And it's gonna be a third partial. It's just there's gonna be one partial with respect to x and two partials with respect to y. And now I'll just copy my functional uh, differential equation over. So I've got my f of x plus y, f of x plus f of y, and then minus this f prime of x times f prime of y. And now let's get to applying those derivatives. So this is a third derivative, and since x and y are combined as x plus y, well, pretty simply this first term is simply f triple prime of x plus y. And then if I take the derivative of f of x with respect to y, I get zero. And two of these derivatives are with respect to y, so that cancels out. Same thing with the f of y term. And then over here, what we're gonna get is the second derivative with respect to x because we took the derivative of the derivative. And then the third derivative with respect to y, so f triple prime of y. So we've got some sort of equation like that, which in itself is pretty interesting. So now what I'd like to do is set y equal to zero and observe that gives us f triple prime of x equals minus f triple prime of zero times f double prime of x. So in other words, the derivative or the third derivative is a constant multiple of the second derivative. And now I'm gonna break this into two cases, you know, kind of similarly to what we had from our two original cases of is the derivative identically zero or not. So let's observe that if f triple prime of zero equals zero, then that implies that f triple prime of x equals zero for all real numbers x. Simply by plugging in zero for this f triple prime of zero on the right hand side of the equation. But then it's pretty easy to notice that if the third derivative of a function equals zero, then that function has to be quadratic. In other words, we have f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c for some numbers a, b, and c. But now let's observe that f of zero equals zero and f prime of zero equals zero, but that in fact means that f of x is simply a times x squared. Notice that f of zero equals zero tells us that the c equals zero, and f prime of zero equals zero tells us that the term b is zero. So we've got f of x is a constant multiple of x squared. But then we also know that f double prime of zero equals negative one, but f double prime of zero equals negative one will tell us that a is equal to negative half. And that's because if we take the second derivative here, notice that we get the second derivative is simply equal to two times a. But then plugging in zero and getting negative one, actually we don't even need to plug in zero. The second derivative is in fact constant there. It's always negative one. But that being said, we get a equals negative half pretty quickly. So anyway, we have f of x equals negative half squared. And now all we have to do is prove that that satisfies this original equation, which that's pretty easy to check. Notice that f of x plus y is simply equal to minus half times x squared plus 2xy plus y squared, just squaring x plus y. But then that's gonna be equal to negative one half x squared minus one half y squared and then let's see, after that, it's gonna be minus x times y. But now let's observe that the minus half x squared is f of x, the minus half y squared is f of y. So we have this is f of x plus f of y, and then minus, 
Well, notice that x times y is simply f prime of x times f prime of y pretty um, easily, or it's pretty easy to see that. And, well, notice that that's exactly our functional equation, which means this function right here satisfies our original functional equation, so this is most definitely a possibility. But notice that possibility came from this setup right here where f triple prime of zero is equal to zero. So let's look at the case when f triple prime of zero is non-zero. So far we've determined that if f triple prime of zero is zero, then f of x equals minus half x squared. So let's look at the case if f triple prime of zero is non-zero. Let's say it's equal to this number c. But then recall that earlier we were able to write the third derivative in terms of the second derivative. In particular, we had the third derivative was equal to minus c times the second derivative using our new notation. But observe that that's a fairly simple differential equation for the second derivative. So in other words, if we set u equal to f double prime of x, then that means we get this differential equation u prime equals minus c times u. And in fact, that differential equation is an initial value problem because we know that f double prime of zero equals negative one. So in other words, u evaluated at zero is negative one, given the fact that u is the second derivative. But notice if u prime is minus c times u, that means that u is equal to some constant, I'll call it capital A, times e to the minus c times x. That's the standard solution to that fairly simple differential equation. But now if u of zero is negative one, then that means that a must be equal to negative one. That's because if we evaluate u at zero, this e to the minus cx is simply equal to one. So that means what we really have is u is equal to minus e to the minus cx. So let's put a little box around that. But notice that's not our solution uh, in any means. That is the second derivative of our solution. So we've got f double prime of x is equal to minus e to the minus cx. But now all we have to do is take the antiderivative two times. So taking the antiderivative once, we get f prime of x is equal to b plus one over c times e to the minus cx using you know, standard rules for taking the antiderivative. But now let's see, f prime of zero is equal to zero. So we can immediately use that to find b. So if we evaluate this at x equals zero, then we're gonna get this equation. It's gonna be something like b plus one over c equals zero, which means b equals negative one over c. In other words, you know, doing a slight summary here, we have f prime of x is equal to minus one over c, and then plus one over c times e to the minus cx. So something like that. But now where do we need to go from there? Now will we take the antiderivative one more time. So that's gonna give us f of x is equal to, so it's gonna be a new constant, I'll call it lowercase a, minus one over c times x, and then minus one over c squared times e to the minus x. But now let's evaluate that at x equals zero using our original initial condition, which is f of zero equals zero. And that's gonna give us an equation of lowercase a minus one over c squared is in fact equal to zero. So in other words, a is equal to one over c squared. And well, we've got a format for our function. So f of x is one over c squared minus one over c times x minus one over c squared times e to the minus cx. Okay, so now all that's left to do is to check that that satisfies 
our, our original equation over here. So let's finish it off by doing that. All right, so here's the proposed solution. And that is f of x is one over c squared minus one over c times x minus one over c squared times e to the minus cx. And now let's check that that satisfies our original functional differential equation. So let's look f of x plus y. So that's gonna be one over c squared minus one over c times x minus one over c times y. I'll go ahead and distribute that through. And then let's see, minus one over c squared times e to the minus cx times e to the minus cy. Again, using exponent rules there. So that's just a slight rewriting. Okay, so now let's look at the right-hand side of the equation. So f of x plus f of y minus f prime of x and then times f prime of y. So what's that gonna give us? Well, notice that we're gonna pick up a one over c squared term from f of x and f of y. So that's gonna be two over c squared we pick up a minus one over c times x and a minus one over c times y from f of x and f of y. And then we're also gonna have minus one over c squared times e to the minus cx and a minus one over c squared times e to the minus cy. Okay, so that's taking care of f of x plus f of y. And now what about f prime of x and f prime of y? Well, let's maybe take the derivative right here just so that we have it on hand and observe that f prime of x is in fact equal to minus one over c and then plus one over c times e to the minus cx. So that means what we have to do here is subtract, let's see, minus one over c plus one over c times e to the minus cx times minus one over c plus one over c times e to the minus cy. But let's see, observe that if you were to multiply this out, and I'm just gonna do this bit in the margin right here, but if you multiply this out, what we'll get is a one over c squared, and then we'll have a minus one over c squared times e to the minus cx, a minus one over c squared times e to the minus cy, and a plus one over c squared times e to the minus cx times e to the minus cy. And let's put all of those in parentheses. And observe that we get some simplification. So this one over c squared cancels this two down to a one. This term right here will cancel with this term right here. This term right here will cancel with this term right here. And we're left with exactly what we need on that side of the equation. So in other words, our functional differential equation is satisfied and we have in fact found all solutions.